Hi everybody, I want to welcome you from all over the world to this special event we're having today. So this is already the second special event, the second big launch uh, that we have this year. So the Nextcloud community is on a roll. So there will be lots of lots of interesting things we're going to announce today. I know that lots of you are curious, you saw this on social media, that you want to know what's going on, we're going to launch today, that you're speculating, and I can promise you this is really worth it. This is a very special launch we're doing today. Of course, there are a lot of challenges also in the world, right? Uh, if you know, there's a, still a pandemic going on, there are some wars, and there are also lots of challenges, especially for the IT community. So we as IT people, we as software people, there's a lot of things that we have to deal with. For example, there's still this big question about, can we somehow communicate and collaborate privately and securely over the internet? That's, of course, a big question that's going on for a long, long time. Um, can we use the modern tools without leaving, giving our data that we are not living in this uh, surveillance capitalism world? So is there a solution for that? That's one of the big challenges that we have as um, software developers. Then, of course, there's this new topic around AI. So AI is rising, right? And it's, of course, very powerful and an interesting technology, but is there an ethical way to leverage it? Is there like a, a, like, a, like a thoughtful, responsible way to use this more new technology without having the problems? So there's another challenge around climate change. Obviously, the computer space, the IT space, all the servers, they have a gigantic CO2 footprint. Is there a way to bring this under control, to minimize that? That's something we really have to deal with as, as IT industry. So I really think that we have a responsibility. We as a software community, as software developers, we have a responsibility of goals and ethics. We cannot just build any software, we want to build good software. And we as Nextcloud, we take this super seriously. So we basically collected all the goals and ethical rules that we follow in this video to show you um, what we really care about, what we are doing, and I want to play this video now for you. We believe privacy is a fundamental human right and everybody should have access to secure communication free from surveillance. We are building decentralized products as an alternative to centralized platforms. People can choose what they want and where they want it. We believe in open source and open standards. Open source is the only way for users to trust their devices. We value sustainability, protecting people, society, and the environment. We believe accessibility is a fundamental human right and technology should be accessible to everyone. The time of our users is very important to us. That's why we do our best to make Nextcloud easy to use. We foster diversity from innovation to transparency and collaboration. Working with our communities and supporting marginalized people leads to a better result. So I think this illustrates very nicely the goals and ethics that we follow as Nextcloud to being a responsible and an ethical software developer. But now let's talk about Nextcloud. Nextcloud is obviously this very powerful tool where you can communicate and collaborate over the internet. And I'm personally really, really proud and really happy that it's used by a lot of very interesting and very important organizations in really, yeah, in lots of interesting and important use cases. First of all, there's Amnesty International. They're using Nextcloud to protect the data of journalists and activists also in places that are often not very nicely and there's surveillance going on and Nextcloud is a great tool to help here. Then obviously Nextcloud is also a great tool in the education sector. So here's an example from Arena Terre. That's an organization which provides um, Nextcloud services to all universities in France. So this is obviously a very huge and very, very important project and we're really happy that we're part of that. Then next example are the schools in Berlin. The schools in Berlin are in the, pro in the moment in the process of rolling out Nextcloud to every single student, to every school. So that's also a project that's going on at the moment and I think it's really, really cool that all these people have access to this nice collaboration suite. Next example is the, the real public sector government organizations, right? Um, for many, many years, we're supplying an Nextcloud for the German government. They're really using to protect their data. Digital sovereignty is the keyword here. Same way the France, the French government, which is a customer of us, user of big user of Nextcloud. Then the Swedish government is in the process of rolling it also out for the whole country. And there's of course the European Commission, which is also using Nextcloud heavily. And yeah, as I said, the, uh, the, the word here is digital sovereignty. They really want to keep their data under control. It should be fully GDPR compliant. They like open source. And this is why they chose Nextcloud and they're really, really happy that we are part of that initiative. 
Of course, Nextcloud is also used in a lot of places where um, you don't have access to the latest technologies. Maybe you're buying for cloud services from the US or China is expensive. And yeah, if you live in the, in the global south, you also want to have um, access to the latest technologies. You want to study, you want to learn it, you want to build something on top of it. And this is why we're really happy that in all those places, Nextcloud is also very, very popular. And of course, it's used by a lot of companies who use it like for remote work, for home office work. So if you're like, not everybody's in the same office, if you work distributedly, then Nextcloud is a great tool to stay connected, to work together, to be productive, but not really without sitting in the same room. Right? And I'm also very, very proud and happy that we are winning a ton of awards for that. So Nextcloud is really popular. We're winning like, awards all the time, especially proud about a Cloud Computing Insider Award that we won last year for the third year in a row. That's a, uh, award is, is um, decided by user voting, so I'm really happy that we have so many, so many users, so many people who really like Nextcloud. Another thing is that we are also working together with a lot of important and, and nice organizations, and we ask some of them to give us a testimonial, like a video testimonial, what they think about our work, what they think about Nextcloud. And we ask three of them this time. There's Wikimedia, which is, of course, the organization that is running Wikipedia, very important. There's Shadow, that's a very interesting cloud company from France. And there's also OVH Cloud, which is one of the leading cloud providers in Europe. And yeah, I want to show you the video testimonial, testimonials from them now. Hello, I'm Eric Sale, CEO of Shadow. Last year, we've launched Shadow Drive. Shadow Drive is based on the technology of Nextcloud, and we're very pleased to continue this partnership with this company, very innovative and sharing the same values that we have to protect the data of our users. With those new releases, we are very pleased to continue this strategic partnership and we wish you all the best for the future. Hallo, wir freuen uns sehr, dass es Nextcloud gibt und wir nutzen es auch gern und viel bei uns. Ja, vor allem, weil es ähm, unseren Projekten natürlich sehr verwandt ist, Open Source, transparent, jeder kann es für sich nutzen. Ähm, großartige Sache. Hi, I am Michel Paulin, the CEO of VH Cloud. Thank you very much for inviting me. We are so proud and so delighted to partner with Nextcloud. For 20 years, OVH Cloud has built an open and trusted cloud with uh, some uh, very important values based on trust and data protection, innovation, but also to partners with actors we share our values. And so you have uh, been able to have now 1.6 million customers thanks to our global infrastructures with 34 data centers. And we are very proud to have a very strong partnership with Nextcloud. We share the same values and we are able also to propose innovative solutions. So again, thank you, Frank, and thank you, Nextcloud, for inviting me. And congratulations for the launch of this new release of the Hub 5. And we wish you all the best. Thanks a lot. Thanks for these nice words. And let's now move to the part that you're all waiting for, the big new announcement, the big new release we have today. And of course, this is our version 5 of Nextcloud Hub. So really happy that today we're launching Nextcloud Hub 5, which is also will be immediately available. And for the first time, we actually picked a theme. So Nextcloud Hub 5 has a theme, an overarching theme over all the improvements we did. And this is the digital workspace. The digital workspace is this idea to have this one place where all the different components are coming together, from chat to video conferencing to email to project management to file sharing and so on. They all come together and you have this one space um, and this can be a space of a company or of a soccer club or a family or just some friends, doesn't really matter. And we work together, communicate together, and this is all then basically represented in, uh, in, in Nextcloud, which makes this a very, very powerful concept. And this digital workspace concept, we um, split up in five big improvements. So we will have now five, uh, sorry, 10 different <laughs> improvements, so 10 different segments. And for the first one, I want to ask Nimisha to the stage to show us more about that. Over here. So let's talk about design and the first major improvement for Nextcloud Hub 5. 
we spend a lot of time in front of our computers. Whether it's for work or for personal things, it's probably in front of a screen. So it's really important that the software you're using, it works for us, it gets out of our way, and we feel good and familiar, and we're having fun while using it. This is why we announced Nextcloud Personal last year. And in building that, we followed four design principles. First is focus on the content. We make sure that the information you need is front and center so that you can do the work you need to do as soon as possible. Second is ease of use. Software should get out of your way. We believe in smart defaults and doing things automatically instead of having a billion settings and configuration. Third is great accessibility. Everyone should be able to use Nextcloud, regardless of whether you use a mouse, a keyboard, a screen reader, whether you have vision impairments or motor impairments, you will be able to use Nextcloud. And fourth, you can make it your own. For feeling at home, it's really important that we're able to customize and personalize our experience. And because of that, we launched Nextcloud Personal. The interface is clean, uh, your wallpaper still shines through, and whatever was visible in the dashboard previously is now seen across all your apps. So as you change your wallpaper, it reflects across your entire Nextcloud. In this release, we also added some new distraction-free wallpapers. These are wallpapers that are subtle and calm and understated, and they provide a great look. And if you want something that's not super busy, this is for you. But of course, you can also upload your own backgrounds. It's super simple. All you have to do is hop on over to your settings, upload your image, and off you go. And regardless of what background you choose, whether it's your own or one provided by Nextcloud, the color of your instance automatically adjusts to match the background. This means everything looks seamless and put together. We think we have a great selection of backgrounds at Nextcloud, but we want to expand, which is why we're really happy to announce the Nextcloud Wallpaper Context, where you have a chance to get your wallpaper featured on Nextcloud. You can head on over to our blog and check that out for more details. But of course, that's not all. We also have added advanced theming options for people who would like to white label their Nextcloud. This means that you can change your background, your color, your logo, as well as fonts and how rounded the corners look. And this is really useful for, for providers of Nextcloud who would like to have some custom branding for their instance. As always, we are also working on, on accessibility so that we adhere to the strictest standards. In this release, we completely redesigned the Contacts app. So whether in an organization or at home, you have a ton of colleagues, friends, and family, whose details you want to keep track of in an address book, and Nextcloud Contacts is the solution to that. We completely redesigned how it looks by removing the multiple columns and showing everything in one nice, neat column. You can also switch between viewing and editing your contacts, and it's easier than ever to add new information for a contact as well. And one of the things that I love most about Nextcloud is working with the community to build something together. And with the Nextcloud design system, it's easier than ever to get started in Nextcloud design or think about how your new Nextcloud app might look. The Nextcloud design system is a design toolkit. It's a set of components that's available on the open source prototyping and design tool penpot that we use at Nextcloud. It contains the, a lot of components like text inputs, drop downs, avatars, sidebars, templates for mobile and desktop, colors, typography, icons, and so much more. This, along with the Nextcloud design guidelines, will make sure that you have pixel-perfect visuals that you can use to contribute to Nextcloud design. To find out more about how you can do this, head on over to nextcloud.com design. So these have been all the improvements. Let's take a look at it in a nice little video. In this video, I want to show you a bit of our design work over our last few releases. With our previous release, we introduced a few simple, calm new wallpapers. The wallpapers shine through nicely, and when you select them, the colors in the user interface adapt to the wallpaper. New is that for wallpapers you uploaded yourself, we also automatically pick an appropriate color adjustment. You can see this highlight color in our interface, for example, on the icons in files. In Nextcloud Office, you can see it on the menu icons too. We also did some cleanups in the interface. For example, the information space above folders is now hidden by default. Don't worry, this great feature is still there. Simply click on Add Description to put some notes above a folder. For Hub 5, we worked on the Contacts app, 
We rearrange the contact information in a single column so it's less messy. As you can see, we continue to improve our design. There are many other subtle improvements you will encounter when using Nextcloud. We hope you will enjoy using Nextcloud every day. Improvements for, whoops. No. So those were the design improvements for Nextcloud Hub 5. We look forward to your feedback, and for the next improvement, let's invite Yoss onto the stage. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Namesha. So, Nextcloud Files is the core of Nextcloud Hub. It allows you to access and manage your files, whether through mobile, desktop, or browser. It syncs your files across your devices and makes it easy to share them and collaborate on them with your colleagues. Now, Nextcloud Files has developed into an advanced document collaboration platform and has all the key features you would expect from such a platform. For example, earlier this year, we introduced advanced versioning. Now, the versioning in Nextcloud is smart. It keeps less versions progressively over time, depending on the availability of your storage quota. But of course, you can always give old versions a name to make them permanent and, of course, to make it easy to find them later. Another key capability of Nextcloud files is, of course, around encryption and security. Now, Nextcloud gives you full control over your data because you put it on your own server. However, sometimes files need an extra level of confidentiality. For example, if you're at a university, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, or working on mergers and acquisitions, you will know that not all data is equal. Now, for these files, we have end-to-end -end encryption. Now, with end-to-end -end encryption, let's think in an HR department, you can share with your team confidential personnel dossiers. And because they're end-to-end -end encrypted, that means they're only available on the client and when they're on the server, they're always fully encrypted. There's no way even the system administrator have access to the files. Now, we still have support for a feature like file drop, so that external people, let's say somebody who's looking for a job at your organization, can upload their resume securely directly into an end-to-end -end encrypted folder, and then that resume is shared with the whole team. And again, nobody outside of the team will be able to get access to these files, not even the system administrators. So, among all these improvements, as Frank said, for Hub5, we had our focus on team collaboration in the digital workspace. So let's talk a little bit more about collaboration, how things go. Now, at the office, you work with colleagues on a project. So what you would do is you get in a room, and there you work on creating a campaign, solving some customer issue, designing a university course, writing a policy brief, any of the kind of projects that you have that pull the people from different parts of the organization in one room. Now, online, you also have such a digital workspace, and that is, of course, Nextcloud Hub. Now, if you have such a project, you will need to first assemble a team. And so in Nextcloud, the project manager would create a circle that is a custom group in our contacts app and then add some team members. Now, the project manager can then choose how the team is managed. It can be directly under their control. They are the only one who can add and remove people but they can also open up the circle so anyone can join or have an approval step in between. Can even delegate some of the management of team members to other people in the team so they can, for example, invite people or approve requests to join. Now, once you have a team that is managed, the next step is to create a space for collaboration. So you ask the system administrator for a group folder that is then assigned to the circle, and this way your team can together collectively manage the work. Now, these group folders will show up in the sidebar, so your team members can easily find the project or multiple projects they are working with, and they can easily say, okay, you know, these are my projects, here are the files, but also, on top of the folder, you have a nice view where you as a project manager can put information, to-do lists, even images, and of course, links to other resources. So, it's super easy in Nextcloud to add such resources. You can, for example, use the Smart Picker and very easily insert a link to our knowledge database. At the same time, Nextcloud also itself automatically brings together different resources using the related resource feature, where you can, for example, see that there's a chat room or a project board that is shared with the same group of people and that is related. And from each of those, you can then come back to the files that you have together. Now, there are many more improvements that we introduced over the last months and in this release, but there's one thing I want to highlight specifically because, again, it's about collaboration. So the desktop client allows you to sync files locally because not all files can be edited in the browser. For example, if you have Photoshop documents, you need to work on these locally on your desktop in Photoshop. 
Now, the desktop client can now automatically lock the files when you open them in Photoshop. And when you're done and you save them, it unlocks them again. So this way, your team members will not edit a file while you were doing creating a conflict. That's, of course, a super powerful way to make your collaboration easier and more smooth. Now, I want to talk about two more final improvements before we move on to the next subject. The first is about dealing with confidential and super critical information. Now, you might be aware that Nextcloud has a tagging feature. This is very helpful if you want to give tags to files so you can much more easily find them. But you can also say, hey, this is an internal project, or these are sensitive files, security critical files. Now, these tags are then visible in the files view. And as a user or as an administrator, you can automate a variety of actions on these tags. It can be very simple. You can say, hey, if a file has the tag PDF, convert it into a PDF file. Or if a file is dropped in a specific folder, you know, uh, put a chat message in one of the chat rooms about this. Or add a specific tag or other things. But as an administrator, you can also use this to codify the policies around security in your organization into Nextcloud files. So you can block access to files based on these policies. You can say, OK, uh, if a file is called internal project X, then people outside of the project X team are not able to access these files. Or you can say uh, files that are accessed out of a certain IP range, access will be blocked. Even if people share with a public link, um, people can then think like, OK, you know, it is now available for other people, but you as an admin have put in the policies in Nextcloud so that files cannot be accessed outside of certain time range, outside of IP ranges, outside of geographical areas, or again, because of ownership, tags, and other factors. So this is a very good way to keep files secure. Now, of course, blocking is a very, well, black and white thing. Either it's available or it's not. But sometimes you need to make documents available for review by an external party. Let's say you work on the merger and acquisition, and you want to show financial or legal documents to a third party, but you don't want them to download the files. Now, in Excel, you have the option to share, but block downloading of files, and people can still see it. Now, of course, you don't want them to make screenshots of everything, so then you can enable the watermarking. And this will make sure that while people can see the document, and you can even give them editing rights, they will not be able to download the documents or do easily taking screenshots. And then you know the watermarks will show when they take screenshots uh, that they did that. Now, of course, manually tagging files for security has a problem, which is that, well, people make mistakes. And somebody can forget to set a tag. Now, you can automate some of this. You can say, OK, people in a certain group let's say, uh, the finance department, when they upload Excel spreadsheets, you know, let's give these the tag secure uh, or critical because, you know, there's probably financial information. But this is still not watertight, and there might be moments that you want to set tags based on the content of files. Now, for this, we have the automatic files classification. So what this does is it looks in the content of files and allows you to set some policies so that, for example, credit card information or personal information, banking data, is detected. And these files then get automatically the correct tags that you have configured. And this way, all the policies that you have set into Nextcloud will be automatically applied to these files. Now, these tags are also available on our mobile devices. You can see them there in the file view. Of course, as a user, when the tags are editable and that can be configured, but if they are editable, you can also add tags and remove tags as a user. Now, the last thing I want to talk about for files is the upgrade that we did to our virus scanner. Now, our virus scanner obviously hands over files to a virus scanning tool that can then say, OK, this is a problematic file. Let's put it in quarantine or not. Now, we are now supporting the ICAP protocol. And this is used by most of the big virus scanning tools out on the market which means Nextcloud is not compatible with those. But it's also used by a variety of data loss prevention tools. And they can also then enforce certain policies on the files this way. So this can be very helpful for data loss protection. So all these improvements together help make Nextcloud ready for use in situations where you even have official security classification systems, like, for example, VS NF Day in Germany. Now, this way, your team can work together without having to worry about data leaks. I'd like to now ask Fabrice on the stage. 
Yes, thank you, Jos, thank you. So I have the honor to talk about Nextcloud talk today and the changes we're bringing to Hub5. So first of all, Nextcloud talk we all know and love. It supports chatting, one-on-one -on -one calls, those big group calls, and of course you can run your webinars with Nextcloud talk. We have a range of features uh, within Nextcloud talk. We support polls, previews, background blurring, silent calling, group mentions, and many, many more features. Uh, which you come to expect from a modern communication tool. So let's run through a call with your team. When you start a conversation, you have group mentions. In that way, you only address the people you want to have in that call and not the complete chat room. And while you are typing, others can see what's coming. And then you are ready to start the call. In Hub 5, we introduce custom backgrounds. Next to the existing feature of background blurring, you now can choose your own images. So, and under the three dot menu, you have the ability to start your call silently. So not everybody in the chat room have their phone ringing and you can just reach them silently. So now we're all in the call and you have the ability to share your expressions through emojis, which will fly over the talk screen. Now, let's say someone of your project team is not able to attend a project meeting. So someone needs to brief this missing project team member. So in our previous hub release, we introduced call recording. You can start and stop the recording at any time during the call and all the participants will be notified when you do so. After the call, you get a notification that the recording is available and you can share directly with the missing team member or your team, or you can store it on Nextcloud file for future reference. Sometimes project meetings require some extensive brainstorming or focused discussions. Now in Hub 5, we support breakout rooms, which allows you to split up your project team in smaller groups. Breakout rooms are such a powerful concept, and it's not only an interesting feature for project meetings, but also for workshops and for those classroom situations. In our previous release, we introduced the Smart Picker. With the Smart Picker, you can easily share information all across Hub. In this example, we share a task directly with your team member within Talk. And also, the Smart Picker allows you to search and insert uh, tickets and merge requests from GitHub and GitLab. As you know, while in a video call in Hop, you can edit your documents. But now we also made it very easy to chat while you are editing and having those video calls. You just can keep on editing and doing that. So now let's talk about Nextcloud Talk on the go. So, Nextcloud Talk is available on mobile clients like iOS and Android, and these apps are extremely popular, and they're making it very easy to access your files and communicate while you're traveling. And today, we have one more exciting thing to announce, because today we are releasing Nextcloud Talk for the desktop. We will be we're supporting Mac, we are supporting Windows, and of course, we are supporting Linux. The desktop clients support all the features we know and love from the web version of Nextcloud Talk. Currently, it's in beta, and we encourage you to try it out and tell us what you think. So let me wrap it up with a small video where you can see Nextcloud Talk in action. Nextcloud users stay in contact with each other through Talk. You can use it for chat, one-on-one -on -one and group calls, but also for webinars and presentations. In our previous release, we introduced recording of calls. Once the recording is done, you will get notified. The recording is a file shared with you, and if you want, you can share the recording to other participants. The second major feature we introduced was breakout rooms. You can let talk split the room for you, do it manually, or let people choose by themselves. In the breakout sessions, you can discuss and brainstorm while the moderators can move between rooms. At the end of the discussion, a moderator simply removes the rooms and everyone is back in the main room. So let's discuss the results of our breakout discussion. I would like to record this session. Now, when I stop the recording, or simply at the end of the call, I get the recording shared with me. 
Talk notifies me that the recording is shared with me. I can, with one click, share it in the room if I want, but there's more. We demoed our Smart Picker earlier to easily add a link to a location or a task from Deck. We brought the Smart Picker also to Talk, and it can do everything it can do in text and collectives. But you might be wondering, where are my GIFs? Some of you prefer them pronounced as GIFs, but we have them either way. Now let's look at the chat and calls more closely. You can now set a custom avatar for a group chat, maybe just an emoji or an image of your choice. By the way, notice that you can now see people typing and can mention groups. Isn't that nice? Ah, it seems we have a call. Let's join. We can now also pick a nice background. So let's be on the beach for this call. During editing of documents, you now have the media controls available. That wraps it up. Hub 5 is another big step forward. Nextcloud Talk has all the basics of a powerful chat and video conferencing tool, from breakout rooms to cutting edge features like AI-based translation. But all this happens on your server. We look forward to hearing your thoughts on Hub 5 and Talk. This was an overview of what's new in Nextcloud Talk for this release. We look forward to hear your feedback for this release with breakout rooms, call recordings, smart picker, and of course, the upcoming desktop client. And with that, I would like to ask Christina for the next section on stage. Thank you, Fabrice. So, next call text and collectives. Whether you're sharing meeting notes with your team or jotting down some ideas after a brainstorming session or making a proposal during a group chat, you'll need a simple and easy to use text editor that allows many users to work together. Nextcloud Text offers a built-in collaborative reach text editing that makes it super easy to take notes during a call, for example. Um, it is easy to use and also optimized for teams working together. Um, as you see, you can see who else is in the document and where are they typing um, in real life. Nextcloud Text is the core of Nextcloud Collectives, um, our ma knowledge management tool. You can use Nextcloud Collectives for tracking and documenting internal processes, providing documentation to your customers, collecting information and collaborating across teams um, inside your organization or outside your organization. Now, the best thing about Nextcloud Collectives it, is that it stores your knowledge in an open and easy accessible markdown format instead of some proprietary database format. And that, of course, makes it so easy to share the files within your knowledge base. And because your knowledge base isn't stored in a database, but in an easy shareable reach text file, our si server site encryption feature now protects your collectives. Now let's see how this fits in with your workflow. Let's assume you will be working um, on a long-term project, which is the development and launching of a new product. You will need a knowledge base for that. Now here, the recent addition of a new team member allows you to upload the recent team picture as an attachment to collectives um, into the company handbook section. Your new team member needs some guidance to find the company office location. And here, the smart picker comes in handy, and it allows you to um, insert all sort of sorts of content, including maps. Um, so this is thanks to the coolness of the OpenStreetMap project. As you can see, uh, the content is very interactive. So the smart picker um, allows you to add um, all kinds of resources, um, internal and external, into your documentation. So whether you'll be working um, together with your team on a project planning for a public library or the teaching of students over the course of a year, Nextcloud Collectives will help you collect and manage your knowledge. Now let me show you all the improvements in action in this little video. Nextcloud Text is an easy to use, efficient, rich text editor for Nextcloud. With this release, 
we show you the cursor of others who are editing the document with you. This feature also comes to Collectives. Collectives is our knowledge base app, which you can use to keep documentation neatly organized. In Collectives, you can now more easily move pages around, even into another collective. We also introduced a nice dialogue that helps you create a new collective. A few settings were added to Collectives. For example, you can now configure if editing mode should be on by default or view mode. We also added a way to quickly see the files that the collective is built out of in the Files app. And of course, from Files, you can now go back to Collectives. There are many other smaller improvements all over Collectives and Text. But let's talk about something big, our Smart Picker. Just type a slash to access it. With the Smart Picker, you can easily insert any kind of content in Collectives, for example, find a task from our Kanban-style planning tool, Deck. It shows up as a nice preview of the card. Of course, this also works in text. There are many types of links supported, like maps, files, and knowledge base articles from Collectives itself. We hope you will get a productivity boost from the improvements we made to text and Collectives. And this wraps up all the improvements in text and collectives. Now for the next part, I'd like to invite Jan on stage. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, now we uh, talked about notes and knowledge bases in, uh, within a team. Uh, and now I'd like to show you uh, what we improve for personal note taking. So yeah, every one of us uh, takes notes, I assume. Yeah? They're very important to us, uh, whether it's for planning, for diaries, or for shopping lists, or journaling, uh, planning a trip, or to-dos for work. Uh, yeah, they're very versatile, and uh, we use them all the time. And uh, we use them on mobile or on desktop, yeah, wherever we have them. And uh, yeah, that brings one problem with it, of course, that uh, yeah, Apple, Microsoft, Google, and so on, they all have access to all our notes, all our deepest thoughts, all our work to-do lists and so on and uh, yeah that's not right so uh, yeah we fixed that um, of course we worked uh, together with our amazing community to make the next notes app a really great experience for example the mobile apps for ios and android uh, which were developed by our cool community uh, they're now free to download in the stores the play store and the ios app store and also uh, lots of improvements on the web interface, including, uh, for example, using the uh, text app, Next.Text. So you can, for example, uh, insert images into notes or use rich text and yeah, really, really use notes however you like. And in this release, we also redesigned the web interface a lot. And uh, we, implemented a uh, we implemented a feature that was much requested, which is the three column interface, which uh, will help you have a nicer overview over your notes and find what's relevant for you. And what we also added is the Smart Picker in Notes. So as you've seen in other parts also, the Smart Picker is supported. Same here in Notes. Um, you can insert, for example, videos. You can simply search for videos, insert them, play them from directly inside your note. Very easy. And this, of course, also works in Talk, Mail, Collectives, and whichever other app supported, supports the Smart Picker. And uh, just like with Collectives, all the notes are stored in an open format. It's just simple text files. So you can just easily sync them with colleagues or, or share them. And uh, yeah, it's just like Nextcloud files. So they're not, they're not locked up in any specific proprietary format. And that's really cool. So yeah, to summarize, this is our awesome new note-taking experience. It really easily syncs across all your devices. You can have it on mobile as a native app, and uh, they're not locked, your notes are not locked up in any proprietary format. And uh, I use Nextcloud notes myself all the time. I uh, really hope you enjoy it as much as I do. And uh, for the next improvement, I'd like to uh, call my colleague Nea on the stage. Thank you, Jan. So, how does your team work with Nextcloud? Everybody needs an email, and this is the reason why Nextcloud comes with an integrated mail client, and it has all the features that a web mail client needs. So let's have a look and find out what's new in Nextcloud Mail. In our last release, we improved our encryption by adding S-Mean. 
It is widely used by large organizations, especially government. It comes in addition to GPG encryption that we already have with Mailvelope. Another main feature that we added to Nextcloud Mail is glue folders. With this, you can edit permission to view and to modify emails. A lot of you people know about this from Outlook and Exchange. With this, you can configure an email that is being shared within your team, or somebody can have an access to a mailbox of a colleague. Now, examine a scenario, examine a scenario. Now, for example, this is a scenario where you are a part of open data project at your municipality, or you are managing a diversity and inclusion training program. You want one place where people can ask all the questions and your team is able to answer them. So now, with Nextcloud Mail, you can configure the mailbox with which a team can have a shared identity, or you can just manage it in the name of a project manager. As a support team, or when you are managing an information desk, you often ask, uh, get asked some questions which have got one standard response. And for that, we included something called text template. To access the temp text template, you will need Smart Picker. You can add your support responses here, or you can just simply reply in an unsolicited manner. Our next feature is an important one for those who are very busy and would like to organize their inbox. Now, with just one click, you can unsubscribe to an email. But of course, you don't want to unsubscribe from Nextcloud newsletter like this one, where we share important information about upcoming events such as Enterprise Day, which is happening now. And now, while you are in the middle of writing an important email and you want to look back into some information, you can easily minimize the mail composer and come back to it once you are done looking up the important information you need. But when your team is starting an important project, you always have a big list of tasks to do. You, when you get a calendar invitation for a meeting, it goes to the calendar. But what if you receive a list of tasks in your email? For that, now you can convert your email into the task. And all your tasks are going to appear in Nextcloud Deck, our nimble Kanban project management tool. You can edit the board real time with rich text, with supporting images and tables where needed. You can, and even here, you can use the smart picker. You can insert links to the knowledge base or even links to the chat room with all the relevant information. This will ensure that all the information you need for a certain task is in one place. So you can manage your task, you can manage your email. What if you have a task that has got an important deadline? And for that, you will need Nextcloud Calendar. It is an easy and a powerful calendaring option. Let's check what's new in Nextcloud Calendar. So you can see all the tasks that you created in DEC will appear in the calendar as well as task app, giving you an option to select the app that is most convenient for you to use, and at the same time, ensuring that you don't miss out on those important tasks and deadlines. So what's new in Nextcloud Calendar? Well, you can discuss your meetings in the email and add it to the calendar by yourself. But with this release, others can also book an appointment for you. How you can do that is you just need to configure a space in Nextcloud Calendar and share the link with others so that they can book an appointment with you. And of course, you can also create a link to the talk room directly via calendar. Now, how cool is that? Let's look how others can go to your profile and book a meeting with you. So they just need to click on the calendar icon this, and select the date on which they want to make the appointment. Select the time slots you are available in, and then you will receive a notification about the meeting. Of course, we are going to verify the email address. Nextcloud is going to verify the email address before booking the appointment with you. And if you are a part of an international team, we made it easy for you to track the day off of your colleagues. 
So with the holiday calendar, now we have all the, all the holidays from different country in one place for you, making it easy for you to book the meeting with a team that is very international. As a part of Contacts app, we now made it easy for you to find your colleagues by adding an address book that is Nextcloud server wide. Now, let's see Nextcloud groupware in action. The Calendar app is one many of our users spend a lot of time in, or at least they use it to manage their time. In the last release, we added attachment handling in the Calendar app and also improved performance. For this release, we updated the Appointments feature, which allows others to make appointments with you directly in your calendar. You can set some conditions, like the times appointments can be made, how far apart they have to be, and so on. New is that you can let the calendar create a talk room for each appointment and add it to the invitation. You will also get notifications now when new appointments are made. If you work in an international organization, you probably want to know when your colleagues have a bank holiday. To make that easier, we now have a way to easily add a holiday calendar for a specific country. A big thank you to the Mozilla Thunderbird community for maintaining these calendars. Nextcloud Mail gives you access to your emails wherever you are. It is a very complete mail client with a nice, easy to use interface and features like a vacation autoresponder, favorites, a nice search, encrypted mails, and more. Our previous release expanded on the existing GPG encryption support, adding SMIME signatures and encryption for safer emailing in enterprise environments. A second feature many large organizations need are shared folders. They allow a team to manage a mailbox together. We also expanded the autoresponder. You can now make it smarter, replying to the subject of the mail you got. Last but not least, we brought the Smart Picker to Mail to easily insert content like deck cards, documentation, or maps. And you can insert text templates, which are particularly useful in Mail. For Hub 5, we made some more improvements. First, we made it possible to minimize the Mail Composer while you are writing an email. We also documented how you can change identity very useful when you have a shared mailbox, like a support team. Are you also getting too many newsletters? With Hub 5, you can unsubscribe from many mailing lists and newsletters with just one click. We already mentioned the new design of the Contacts app. We also introduced a system address book, which makes it easy to find the contact information of your colleagues without having to add them and manage their data manually. We hope you will love the improvements we made in Groupware and look forward to your feedback. And now I would like to ask my colleague Nimisha to come on stage and talk more about how your team collaborates. So let's talk about the next major improvement for Nextcloud Hub 5. We are all social people. At work, we like to talk and socialize with our colleagues, and I think we can all agree that with remote working, it's maybe a bit more difficult to create and maintain those personal connections with the people we work with. And that's why we're building Nextcloud Social. It's an internal social network, and it's super easy to use. You can follow what your colleagues and see what they're up to. Maybe they shared the statistics from their weekly webinar, or maybe it's the new business card design. And your colleagues can also follow you and figure out what you've been sharing right from your Nextcloud profile. In this release, we made it super easy to refer to any of your colleagues from any place using the Smart Picker. It's super simple, just insert the link, and with just one click, you can see more details about their profile and even their social activity stream. Of course, we built all of this using open standards. Nextcloud Social was built entirely using ActivityPub, which means that if you wish, you can even connect it to external services like the Fediverse and have it interact with Mastodon as well. But of course, this is only if you desire. You can completely keep it within your organization as well. And there you have it. Nextcloud Social is a great tool for creating and maintaining social connections within or outside your organization. We hope you have fun using it. And for the next major improvement, back to Jan. Thank you, 
Now, the next improvement I want to talk about is Nextcloud tables. So the issue is a lot of software companies are forcing people into the cloud for more vendor lock-in and more control over your data, actually. This includes Microsoft SharePoint, who are discontinuing their on-prem solution. So a ton of people are actually asking us for a proper alternatives that is really open source and on-prem. So since here is Nextcloud, it can actually cover a lot of what Microsoft SharePoint can do. So we have group folders, for example, and a lot of sharing features and full text search, and yeah, really a lot of features which cover all these use cases. And it's already a fantastic document management tool. But one thing really has been missing, and that's handling structured data. For SharePoint, this is, of course, handled by lists. And this is why we created the Tables app. Many of you already use it and really like it from what we hear. So yeah, it really allows you to do a lot of things uh, in a structured way. So for example, you can create a wide variety of tables, you can create customer lists, uh, you can use it for internal processes, and so much more. Basically, yeah, your imagination is the limit. So you can uh, modify and, and edit anything, you can add columns, uh, add entries, and also tables can be shared and exported to work with your other tools. And so you can work within your team, but you can also, you're also not limited to Nextcloud tables. You can also work with anything else that you like. And you are very flexible when it comes to the input methods. For example, you have date fields, a simple yes, no solution, or a full rich text input field. And with the new release, we added a ton of improvements. For example, single and multi-select of columns, sorting, filtering, and search, rich text editor for text fields, and the ability to manage tables via an API. And another thing that we added is actually import. So you can import CSV and XLS files. And uh, one thing that is very cool is when you edited a table outside of, uh, of Nextcloud, so for example, you added a new, new column in, in Excel or uh, in LibreOffice, uh, then it automatically detects that and can add the column to the table. So you don't have to do that manually and just add the data. So that is very cool. So to show you the real power, I'd like to show you some specific examples of the templates that we have. So as you see, we come included uh, with a bunch of useful templates you can use and adapt. So the first one I'd like to show you is a simple member list. For example, you can use it for, for an employee database, team member list, or a very simple customer relationship man management system that you can share with your team and easily manage your customers. Then the next thing is vacation tracking. So you can People can, uh, your employees can submit vacation requests here, and the relevant team leads or HR can manage it. And for more private things like health tracking, for example, Tables is also a great solution because you can put in all your private data there, like your, yeah, your health data, which is arguably your most private stuff, and it really stays under your control. Yeah, so you can really trust it yeah, with your private data and not be worried about that these big companies have control over it. So. At the moment, we're doing several projects uh, with a lot of customers uh, to migrate them from SharePoint to Tables, and this is mostly in the government sector. And since, yeah, with Nextcloud Tables, Nextcloud Hub can easily manage uh, most of the use cases of Microsoft SharePoint, uh, we're happy to say that, yeah, you can just reach out and our team and partners will help you migrate over. And for the next improvement, yeah, I'd like to welcome Michael Meeks, the General Manager of Collabora Productivity. Thank you so much, Jan. So some great things to see there, adding new tables, and uh, I, I think that's fantastic. But of course, there are trillions of documents out there already, and we need to get those into Nextcloud Hub 5 and give people the control of their documents, uh, give them their digital sovereignty back, and allow them to collaborate around those documents in real time. Obviously, we have word processing and uh, wonderful document editing capabilities uh, here to do, to do great things with, and, and those work re really nicely. But I think it's important also to make it look beautiful. So, you know, we've spent lots of time in Hub 4 making this fit in really nicely and give that familiar integrated feel so it really feels like part of the suite. And also supporting dark mode for those who, who really need to have a different uh, contrast view or maybe just those uh, lying in bed at night wanting to be considerate to their spouse. And um, we also, of course, support spreadsheets, bringing those in, your XLXX files and your ODS files and all manner of other spreadsheets. So you can collaborate on those and, and get your financials perfect. Um, for presentations, of course, as well. Uh, so you can present your slides 
and make those beautiful. And working a lot on compatibility there. Um, Draw, perhaps, is not a component that's as known as it should be. Uh, so you can get your Visio diagrams in, actually even Microsoft Publisher files in some cases, and uh, draw small, small diagrams and, and copy-paste those around the suite and use them elsewhere. Compatibility is obviously vital, and documents encode a large amount of font metrics, uh, you know, the exact sizes and spaces of fonts, into them in a way that people don't ever see, really. And so to make interoperability and compatibility so much better there, um, we've included easy ways to not only manage, but also thumbnail and see those fonts right into Nextcloud Hub 5 uh, so you can drag and drop and move and, and, and bring those, those fonts in uh, to make your documents look beautiful. Um, I think we talked about watermarking, uh, another critical feature to make sure your documents stay in Hub 5. You can share a link with someone else, and they can collaborate, and they can edit and redline maybe, um, but they can't get the actual document until it's just perfect. So, uh, so you can see how that works there with the watermark. Another key thing is that uh, you know, if you're in a meeting and someone hasn't shown up, it's absolutely vital that you can give lots of work to them and uh, you know, encourage them to show up next time. Um, so at mentioning is a great way of doing that with comments. Just do a quick at, start typing, select the user, bing, they get a notification that will bring them back into that document, uh, just like in Nextcloud Talk and other parts of the uh, Nextcloud suite. So very, very powerful there. Another key feature in uh, Hub 5 is Zotero uh, integration, so we can do citations. And this is a really beautiful uh, integration. Uh, you don't need a Java app. It just works out of the box. It talks to the Zotero uh, cloud service, so you can share citations with your group. Uh, maybe you have a research group in a university. And you know, there's a lot of things that you commonly cite as you build uh, the world's knowledge on top of existing knowledge. Uh, and of course, useful for students, too, to make sure that they're you know, not claiming credit uh, falsely, uh, but also for lawyers and government uh, officials drafting legislation, lots of uses uh, for that. Another key thing here, of course, is the smart picker. And would it be a Hub 5 talk without a smart picker uh, plug? So you know, getting rich content uh, beautifully into ne uh, Collabora, Collabora Online, uh, next cloud office. And uh, just like in Mail, Collectives, Talk Notes, all of these other components, you have that same rich functionality providing so much power and all of these exciting plugins uh, that go into that smart picker mix there. So some really cool things here, linking people and showing these nice previews of people. And I think as we link documents more and more, it becomes really important to, to look at those links. And, and it's, you know, it's a bit of a pain having to follow every link in your document to check it's nice. So isn't it cool if you can just mouse over there and you can see a thumbnail, it is a correct link, it goes to where we want to, and then not have to have to follow it uh, to check that out. So just seeing how documents connect better and more quickly in that Hub 5 world. and not just linking, but deep linking inside documents. So I think this is a really unique feature here. You can then link directly into, uh, say, a chart or a heading or a specific piece of a rich legacy document, potentially. And you can browse through that and link directly into just that specific heading or piece you want to highlight to someone. Another key thing we've been doing is making those large documents uh, easier to navigate. Uh, so we've added this uh, sidebar on the side, which makes uh, things, things much easier to, to see the structure of documents and to, yeah, for, for accessible uh, users to perhaps see and, and quickly navigate through large, complex documents. I guess another key thing, or perhaps the, the, the big last key thing here, is, is compatibility. We work amazingly hard here. And there's a jigsaw puzzle that we've been working on for decades. And I'm just, I don't know if you like puzzles. I mean, I love them. But the last few pieces, you know, are just, are just going in here, and it's getting so much better. Um, so many features. So uh, multi-page floating frames, uh, multi-stop gradients, uh, data pivot tables. I'm just, there's, there's just so much going on uh, to make everything really beautiful. So if you've had problems in the past, if you're one of the rare few, uh, please do try that out again and uh, check out some of the new features there uh, in, in that area. One of the things I, I like to call out is the, uh, the LibreOffice technology that we build on and the awesome community around it. Uh, thanks, thanks to them, we have some great templates that we're shipping now by default in this new release, and particularly the Indonesian community, who've done some great work here uh, providing nice new uh, slide templates. You know, for your uh, holiday snaps, you can make that beautiful. Uh, your next presentation is going to be just amazing. We're done with Hub 5. And of course, writing those, just those key documents, you know, your birthday party invites and so on. So before I finish, I'd really just like to say what a pleasure it is to work with Nextcloud. Uh, we love the team. Uh, we love working together. And I think 
there's just huge value in that network effect of you know, adding that smart picker in, making, making it work beautifully as part of Nextcloud Office, and, and collaborating together to make a wonderfully rich, compatible experience uh, to bring people and their documents into a digitally sovereign Nextcloud Hub 5. So thank you. And with that, I'll introduce my friend, Jos Portvliet. Over to you, Jos. Thank you very much, Michael. Thank you very much. So for the final improvement, I like to turn my attention to applications in and around Nextcloud Hub. Now, Nextcloud Hub is a powerful application platform, and there are tons of integrations in third-party applications and tools that are available. So I'd like to talk a little bit about ones that we recently introduced, and then talk a little bit about some new ones. Now, recently we introduced integration with Miro, which is the most used, most popular whiteboarding tool on the market. And we also introduced integration with Colaboard because Miro is an online service and a lot of our users and customers, of course, care a lot about having data on-prem. So Colaboard can run on-premises and is also integrated in Nextcloud, making it easy to create new boards and you know, jump to them, modify them, etc. Now, we also integrated with BlueMind Grouper solution as well as with XWiki, which is an open source and on-premises wiki that has really, really nice Nextcloud integration now. You can really search for your wiki from within Nextcloud and you can you know, view them there, edit them there. It, the integration is very nice. Now Mattermost, which is a chat application, also has integration with Nextcloud now. We um, make it possible to share files directly from Nextcloud files into a Mattermost chat room. And we worked with our friends at the Open Project community and there we also developed a really nice integration. We actually recently improved it further, allowing users to really nicely connect the data related to their projects together between Nextcloud and Open Projects. So Open Projects allows you to basically select files from Nextcloud and connect them to a project or upload them, and then they are stored in Nextcloud with the relation to the project being made visible. Uh, you can find projects, you can search through them from within Nextcloud. So the integration here is very nice. Now, a new integration we did is integration to Notion, a popular design and note-taking app. Now, the Notion integration makes it super easy to share a link to a Notion page or a Notion database with other people using the Smart Picker. So you can do this everywhere in Nextcloud Hub, in Talk, and in Office, and in Groupware, in Files. Um, the other thing you can do is find them using the universal search on the top right, so it makes it very easy to find your Notion pages and notes. The second thing that we worked on for integration is integration GPT-0. Now, GPT-0 is a service that is designed to counter some of the issues around AI, and then in particular, the misinformation and cheating risks. So think of students who write an essay, or a fake news article written with ChatGPT, you would want to identify those and then be able to say, okay, you know, not cool. Um, maybe don't believe the fake news article, or as a teacher, of course, uh, well, yeah, the student didn't do their work, right? So with GDP0, you can basically scan a file, and GPT-0 service then, then checks if the document shows signs of being generated by AI. It gives a probability um, but of course, even then, we have to understand that this is part of an arms race between AI generators that try to fool the detectors and sound as human as possible. And on the other side, of course, you have these detection tools like GPT-0 that try to, as accurate as possible, separate AI-generated texts from non-human-generated uh, yeah, text texts. So you can't take these probabilities um, as the one truth need to pay attention. Uh, sometimes it'll misidentify human-generated text as AI-generated the other way around. So you have to be careful. But still, we think this is an important step that these tools are available, and that's why we integrated GPT-0. Now, there are also integrations in big external projects. There is, for example, the Buildings Cloud, a leading solution for schools in Germany. There's Moodle, the biggest open source learning management tool, and Phoenix, which is a publicly funded project for digital sovereignty for the German government. So these integrate Nextcloud in them and with other tools around to give good experience to the users of these products. Now, there are over 300 apps and integrations already in our app store, and well, some of them I just mentioned, but we're also thinking about how to grow and to get more apps and integrations. Now, we've 
done a bunch of things for that, and one of these is to work on good tutorials for third-party developers to get them up to speed as quick as possible and lower the barrier to developing a new app or an integration with Nextcloud. Another thing we did is that we have been working on improving the Open Collaboration Services API. This is designed as an open API for content collaboration platforms like Nextcloud. And earlier this year, we announced that we would make it possible to develop apps in other languages for Nextcloud, and there would be software development kits to make this easy, as well as, of course, we promised to work on the documentation. Now, in this release, we are happy to announce that we made it possible to look at the documentation and we document that using the open API standard. This makes it easy to develop your apps and to connect to Nextcloud through this standard. As you can see, we have nice example code as well as you know all kinds of details about the API calls. But we went beyond a website with documentation. We developed the OCR Viewer app. This is an app in Nextcloud that directly there not only shows you the documentation, but it actually makes it possible to do an API call from based on the example. You, you give in the details, you run the call, you can see the result, and this way you can test API calls, and then, of course, use that the results to integrate it into your application. So this is the work we did for developers. But there is one more exciting thing to talk about. We are launching four software development kits that make it possible to develop for Nextcloud using Python, Rust, TypeScript, and Go, really lowering the barrier to integrating your existing application with Nextcloud or building a tool directly for working with Nextcloud. So combined, all these tools should really lower the barrier, and we are really, really looking forward to all the apps that our community will be developing over the coming months. Now, I have one more interoperability topic to talk about. Now, interoperability is, of course, our key to breaking down barriers between the use of Nextcloud and a wide range of contexts. A lot of organizations are using a number of different tools and platforms, including Nextcloud Hub. And a lot of our customers are using Microsoft products. Now, to help these organizations, we offer a variety of integrations with Nextcloud together with our partner, Sendent. And the most well-known of these is probably the Outlook integration, which is also very much a loved and appreciated integration. We know a lot of our users and customers are using this. So you know the situation. You have to send some really big data to a customer or a partner, uh, maybe the plans for an infrastructure project, a large research data set, or a marketing campaign. And these files are really big. You can't just attach them. Now, the Outlook add-in can automatically detect this situation. It will upload the files to your own Nextcloud and then insert a link into the email so that when you send the mail, people can just click the link and then download the files there. And the whole limit on size is completely yeah, gone. Now, of course, you can also directly pick a file from your Nextcloud and insert that as a link into the email. But there is another integration that comes courtesy of the Outlook add-in. And this is integration with Talk. When you're creating a calendar appointment with one click, you can also create a Talk room so that other people can easily join you in a call using Nextcloud Talk. Now, Sendent has been working on a major rewrite of the add-in built on the latest Microsoft technologies. And this has a number of benefits. First of all, it brings with it support for macOS, as well as the Microsoft Outlook web interface, bringing it to all the important platforms that a lot of our customers need to support. The new Audin also continues to support the secure mail feature. So this is a feature that you might be familiar with if you're at the bank or you've interacted with a government organization and they were sending you confidential information. What this does is instead of just uploading the attachments, it also uploads the email content itself to Nextcloud so that when you receive an email, that is sent via the secure mail feature. It just has a link and a password for the link, if this is set. And then you have to access the content of the email as well as the attachment, of course, at the link. Now, this way, the data of the user, the sensitive data that you're emailing them, is not shared with the email provider that the user is using, which could be a private email provider like Gmail or Hotmail or something like that. So this way, the data is being kept, well, on Nextcloud, secure in a way, and it can also use guest accounts so that the user just gets a notification and a link and then has to log in there before they can see the email 
and download the attachments. Now, there is more, of course, to Outlook integration, and that's why we earlier introduced the Microsoft Exchange connector. This syncs Nexart calendars and Outlook calendars. So it is very easy for users to edit the calendar in Nextcloud and then see the changes in Outlook and the other way around, making use between those applications much more seamless. It does more. It also works for calendar and contacts. So your contacts will be synced between your Nextcloud and your Outlook, and so you have the same on both. So the final Nextcloud Exchange Connector release is scheduled for later this year, and you can still sign up for beta testing. Now the third and last integration that is coming for Outlook, or if, well, for Microsoft, is actually Microsoft Teams integration. So this integration will make it easy to share files into a Teams chat room directly from Nextcloud. You can simply select the files, you know, set the password, expiration date if you like, and then the link is directly inserted with a nice preview into the Teams conversation. We invite you to join our beta programs. You can learn more about these integration apps on our blog. But of course, on the back end of Nextcloud, there is also a ton of integrations with Microsoft environment. For example, you can have shared storage between Windows Network Drive and SharePoint and Nextcloud or you can have your user directory shared using Active Directory, or for editing documents, you can use the Microsoft Office Online server directly. So between all these different and improved integrations, we think our customers will have a great experience working between a Nextcloud system and a Microsoft environment, and we look forward to your feedback on all these. Now, next, I would like to ask Frank again back to the stage. Thanks a lot, Jos. <coughs> Wow, there's so many improvements. I, this is such a long presentation. I think we are getting to two hours now, um, but there are so many great improvements we have in the latest release, so it's really mind-blowing how productive the Nextcloud community was and, of course, still is. So at the very beginning, I told you for this release that we, for the first time, have a theme, something that really binds all the features together. And that's, of course, as I said, a digital workspace. And you can really see, I think, from all the different pieces we had here, how this all fits together into one very nice integrated collaboration suite. I mean, you have the smart picker, which binds everything together. You can link from one resource to another. We have the widgets to show them. We have the integrated search, the integrated notification, and so on and so on. <clears throat> so this is really a very nice integrated collaboration suite, which I think is very, very useful and very impressive. Um, but of course, often people come to us and say, okay, this is great, but I also only want to use parts of Nextcloud. Maybe I want to use only the talk chat video conferencing part, or only the groupware part, or only the file swing and share part, or other things. Or maybe I want to extend it with other solutions. Maybe you want to integrate a different mail client into Nextcloud, or a different chat into Nextcloud, and so on. And I'm really happy to say that everything we showed you, all the components are all plugins that we call apps. They're all components that you can switch on and off separately. So Nextcloud is not one monolithic thing but it's really a component of different things. And you can really switch on and off the ones you want. And you can also add the integrations we heard just from yours to integrate into other solutions. You can really have your collaboration suite as you want it. I think this is a very, very powerful and helpful concept. So at the beginning, I told you that we have 10 areas of 10 big improvements. That's of course, well not of course, it's not completely true, because actually we have a special one at the end, an 11th. And that's obviously the very hot topic of intelligence in AI at the moment. So that's something which is really like in the press and all over the internet, um, everywhere. And it's really a, a topic that we also want to cover here. So I believe that technology like Nextcloud has the job to make our life easier, to remove mental load, to automate boring tasks, and just to basically make, yeah, make our life and our, our, our world better. And of course, AI and machine learning has a huge potential to do exactly that. The problem here is that there's also like a sort of a dark side of AI. I mean, we all read like the negative stories about like biases in these machine learning models, or sometimes you have like, it's unclear what the CO2 emissions are, what the energy consumption is, there's some privacy problems and so on. And this really brought us into a bit of a different, uh, difficult situation, because on one hand, we want to provide all the cool new features to all of you, that you can be productive and you can automate boring things. On the other hand, we cannot really like, just like ignore the problems. And because, as I showed in the beginning, next we really think that we are an ethical organization with some values that we want to follow. 
So what we, how, what we can we do there? How can we provide you the good stuff without the bad stuff, basically? And this, after a lot of discussions, brought us to the Nextcloud Ethical AI Initiative. So this is a framework that we discuss and use internally to judge our own machine learning activities, but also use to judge other things that we integrate into Nextcloud. So they can make sure that we have the, the good parts of AI without the bad parts. Of course, you might uh, ask the question, what is ethical AI, right? It's just a nice term, but what does it really mean? That's, of, of course, a good question. So after like, really discussing with a lot of experts, as I said, internally and externally, we basically isolated a few key areas of potential problems of AI. The first one is the question around discrimination. Right? Is there a bias in the machine learning model? Is there really like, I don't know, some discrimination in there? Or is it really totally, completely neutral what's generated from there? That's really a question. And it's like the answer is usually not yes or no. The answer is like, we don't know. It's a problem. Second area is, of course, um, climate change and the CO2 footprint. So how much energy does this huge GPU cluster farms really need for training all, this, all these models? Uh, what is the footprint? And with all these cloud services, or most, most of those cloud services, we don't even know it, right? It, that's not really disclosed. We don't know how much energy consumption there is behind ChatGBT, for example. It's just not clear. Next area of potential problems is the whole area of security and privacy. So can we use all these services, functionalities, these powerful features, and still have our privacy and still have our security? That's a very, very good question. And the last one is, of course, is this all freely available? Is this all free of charge? Right? Or are we moving into some kind of freemium model where at some point we then have to pay for the advanced features? And I mean, for Nextcloud, it's really important that all these powerful tools are freely available to everybody. So that's, of course, an open question around AI. So we decided that we want to measure the ethical AI score that we developed according to three requirements. The first is open source. <clears throat> we believe that all the source code should be open source. And this is the source code that's used to train the model, but also the source code that's used to use the model. Why is that important? Because only if you have the software, the source code, if you can really look inside the box, then you can see if this is all efficient, and if not, you can improve it. That's not really possible if you just use a service over the internet and you don't really know what's going on. So open source is the key to transparency here. Second requirement is that the machine learning model is freely available. Why is this important? Because then you can take it and you can install it locally where you want, and then it's running on-premise and no data is sent somewhere else. So having a local, freely available machine learning model is really important. And then last but not least, the training data also needs to be freely available, because only then it's transparent how this model actually was trained. Because if there's a bias, if there's some discrimination, some bad content in the training model, then all the model will also not very good. And to have the transparency here, we have to be able to verify, to check the training data. And if it's open and we find a problem, then we can fix it. And again, this is needed for transparency. So what we develop now is this traffic light system. Right? We have this um, green, yellow, orange, and red uh, ratings. And they're basically connected to the three requirements, depending if all three are done, uh, fulfilled, if two are fulfilled, one is fulfilled, or if none of it is fulfilled. Okay? So we basically are committed to rate all the activities we do internally and all of our partners and other services we work together with according to those traffic light systems. And they're all exposed to the user, so the user can really decide which plugin to switch on and off. <clears throat> Just to be clear, all of these AI features are optional. Right? You can really switch them on and off as you want, and you can charge it according to this traffic light system. That's very important. So you might wonder, okay, why is Frank like hammering so hard on all this ethical question and all this privacy question and open source, and this is really such a big deal. It's just another service on the internet, right? Well, if you're following the press lately, then you really see a lot of discussions around this topic. I think I all started with Samsung. They had a case that an engineer from Samsung copied in some confidential data into ChatGPT, and then obviously this confidential data leaked to somewhere else. And this led to the ban of ChatGPT in Samsung. And I think since then, this spread it to more and more companies. So uh, Apple also decided to ban ChatGPT for the same reasons. 
and also the same with JP Morgan or Goldman Sachs, Citibank, and lots of other organizations. They all ban this Bart uh, assistant on the ChatGPT and all the things because well, data is floating around, leaving the organization. You know, don't know what is going on. And the worst case, it's even used to train the model further. So this is also a big problem. So we, as Nextcloud, we are always committed since the very beginning that we provide a solution that is open source and can be installed locally. So no data is flowing anywhere else. And this is exactly the same that we're following here in the AI area. So we believe that everything in Nextcloud should stay in Nextcloud. Everything as should as possible runs locally, which gives you the transparency and the security to, yeah, that's what you need. And that's the same for like non-AI technology as same as with AI technology. So let's go through our functionalities and see how this rating system applies. How are we doing here? Let's start with the features that exist already for a while. So you might know that on top of the files list, there is this um, list of recommended files. It's based on behavior, what you did in the past. And this is something which is an intelligence feature, which is according to our rating completely green. Because the source code is open source, the data is local, no data is flowing anywhere else. This is a really cool thing. And by the way, we have similar features in other areas like share recommendations and so on. Second feature is the suspicious login detection. This is a way where the login behavior of our users is like, like monitored and a machine learning model is trained here and we can detect weird or unusual or suspicious logins. For example, if someone logs in from in the middle of the night from an IP address from a different continent, then maybe something is not really correct and then we can send out a warning or trigger two-factor authentication and so on and so on. Right. And this is a system that we built ourselves, of course. It's completely open source. All the data stays local. No, no data is leaking anywhere. This is really good. Then end of last year, we launched our new Photos app. And this comes with a number of very cool machine learning features. For example, here, face recognition. So in your photos, the different faces are recognized and categorized together. And this is then super easy and super useful. Like then if you have photos of your family or a party or something to just group them together by a person. And here again, we're using a machine learning model that runs completely local, where the training data is completely transparent, the source code is open and so on. No data is floating anywhere else. By the way, I think we are one of the very, very few or you say, um, um, photo management um, solutions who can exactly that without exposing all your private photos to, I don't know, half of the world. Next feature is, of course, the object recognition. We can also detect all kinds of objects in the photos, for example, a plane or a lake or a bicycle and so on. And again, this is using a machine learning model that we developed, runs completely local, no data is leaking anywhere else. This is very great and secure. Next feature is our related resources. We heard about it earlier already. Um, we have this uh, segment on the sidebar where we show other things in Nextcloud that are related to the thing that you're looking at at the moment. So maybe you're in a, in a marketing um, chat channel and there's a marketing folder and a marketing calendar int intelligently automatically linked together. It's a very useful feature. And again, it's completely ethical and no data is leaking anywhere else. It's very, very powerful. And the last example I want to give here is, of course, our uh, priority inbox. So in mail, we have this priority inbox where the very, very important mails are specially flagged and showed at the top. And again, this is using machine learning that runs completely on device. And I'm also happy to say that this area was greatly improved with this release. So it's a lot more intelligent. It takes the subject now into account and lots of other things. So this very nice machine learning model is actually improved a lot. And of course, it runs completely local. No data is going anywhere else. Again, I'm not sure if there's any other like mail client that can run locally, which has this feature, which is very powerful. But now let's talk a little bit about the bigger AI features. And now I want to go into four specific ones and talk a little bit more in depth about them. The first is, of course, image generation. Image generation is a feature that is very, very yeah, useful and powerful. For example, if you're in the middle of a brainstorming about some art project or I don't know, and you just want to visualize something, then um, we have this integrated directly into the smart picker. So in the smart picker, you can just say, for example, here in a chat, I want to generate an image. And you get this prompt dialog. You can just type in what you want. Here are some bracelet or whatever you want to visualize. And boom, you have the image generated and it's directly 
post it into the chat. And this works in other places exactly the same. That's obviously a very cool and powerful feature, but this is an optional integration into the DALI image generation service, which of course, as you might know, is a red service according to our rating. This is just a service that sits on the internet. No one sees the software. No one has access to the model. No one sees the training data. We don't really know what's going on. It's just a black box. You can send the data there, you get something back, but you, there's no transparency there. This is very useful, but of course, this is obviously not good enough for us. And right? you really want to have something better. And this is why we also developed an alternative to that. So we also integrated stable diffusion. And stable diffusion is actually an open source system that can completely run locally. It has a, a model that runs locally, and also the training data is transparent. So you can just easily generate a photo, like here, a dog in a Star Trek uniform because of some reason. Um, and basically no data is leaving your server. So this is a very nice um, solution, and you can maybe see a bit our strategy. This is really what we, what we want to go for, like locally and ethical AI, and this is a great example. Let's go to the next big feature, and this is, of course, translations. So if you work in an international, global organization like Nextcloud, you constantly have to translate documents, text, contracts between different places, different languages, different countries. And so translating things is, is very, very important. And we made this like super, super easy in Nextcloud. So in any place, you can just mark a text. You can go to the menu, say, I want to translate it. And boom, you get this dialog. You can select the language. And yeah, it's just automatically translated. And with one button, it's inserted back into the document. So this is very powerful and very, very useful. We integrated here that uh, the DeepL system and also ChatGPT. So um, obviously both of them are red services. They're not transparent. You don't know the source code, you don't know the model, the training data is not there. It's just a black box. You don't know what's going on. But as I said, translating things is so important for us and I be believe for a lot of organizations. I mean, I think a lot of just companies and governments are just posting all the confidential stuff into Google Translate or Microsoft Service, I don't know, without even thinking about it. But I think translation is something that is really privacy and security relevant. So we really want to have something which is better. And then I'm really happy because that in this release, we built our own translation system. So we have our own machine learning model, which can completely run completely local, can translate all kinds of text into each other different languages, and no data is leaking anywhere else. You can really use this for confidential documents, and nothing is really yeah, leaving your, your organization. So this is a really completely green, completely ethical AI service that we have here. And I really think that this is a big deal, and because of that, we're so happy with it, we integrate it into more places. For example, here in Nextcloud Talk, um, maybe you're chatting with someone in a different language, and maybe you don't fully understand some sentences, I don't know. Then there's a directly translation system directly built into the chat. You can just go to a message, say translate, you get this dialogue, you can select the language and have it translated, and no data is leaking your system at all. And this is a complete green and ethical AI service, in our opinion. I think this is a really, really big deal. Next topic I want to talk about is dictation. People really, really like to dictate things. For example, dictating um, an email or a note or just something else. It's just very convenient. And of course, most of the dictation systems in the world, again, sending your voice recording to some remote cloud server, then it's somehow analyzed and the text is sending back, uh, sent back to you. And this is, of course, not really cool and not acceptable for us. And this is, I'm also very happy that in this release, we have our own dictation system, which runs completely local on your machine. And again, it's just so easy in any place, in a chat or in a document, you can just activate a smart picker. You can just want to say you want to translate something, and then just like um, super easily, the, the, um, the text is then generated, right? I mean, you just dictate here in the dialogue, for a few seconds, you wait a little bit, and then boom, as you see, it's inserted back into the document, in this case an email. So this is just super, super easy, and everybody can do it, and no data is leaving your server. Again, very, very important for us. So we really like this feature so much, 
um, that we also use it in other places. I mean, it is still a yellow service, right? it's not green. The problem is that Whisper that we're using, um, the training data is not transparent, but it's still the data is keeps on your server. So this is still a huge improvement. So we really, really push for this feature in lots of different places, and we also integrated it into other areas. For example, in Nextcloud Talk, you heard about it earlier, we have this very beautiful feature to do uh, recordings. So just this one click, you can record any video conversation, and you get the video um, recording back. And we integrate it here directly. So directly after this call, you also get a very nice transcript of the, of the recording. Right? So you have like text transcripts of every call, if you want to have it. Very nicely, you can then just format it or search it later, or do something, share it with the group, do anything. And again, I think we are the only ones who can this kind of feature completely local on your machine. And I don't think there's any other service which can this kind of advanced features like a video call transcript without sending it to some cloud service on a different continent. So this is quite unique. If you really care about security and privacy, the next cloud is like the only option for you. Which led me then to the fourth and final area I want to talk about. And that's, of course, the big one around text generation. So text generation, which large language model, is, of course, a big deal. You all saw it the last few months. It can be super, super important. So what we did, we integrated optional, again, everything is optional, <laughs> uh, chat GBT integration into the smart picker and different places of Nextcloud. You can, for example, um, just here in the document, select the smart picker and you want to have, I don't know, a contract template um, and boom, it's automatically generated in Nextcloud Office. You just generated a very nice first draft of a contract directly in Nextcloud Office with just a few clicks. Very, very convenient. This also works in other places, like um, here, for example, in mail, if you want to write a mail here in this case, like a birthday invitation, you don't really know how to do it. You just give him the simple prompt press the button, and boom, your mail is written for you. That's obviously super, super useful, um, and that we can do this with this ChatGBT integration. And this, as you know it, it works, of course, everywhere with the smart picker. Here, next, loud talk. If you want to write a chat message, you don't really know how, you don't have the fantasy, the creativity at the moment, you can have it like generated for you, and it's automatically filled in there, and you can just send it. And it's also useful for a little bit more advanced information, data, for example, in the project management tool deck. You can just like, uh, if you're wondering, hey, how should my project plan look like? I have this task, I need a project plan. It can automatically generate a complete project plan for you in Nextcloud deck. So, like, super, super useful. But of course, <laughs> you know it, this is a red service. So this is something where, again, data is sent, sent somewhere else, in this case to OpenAI. Something that you don't understand happens and you get the data back. You don't know what code is executed, you don't know the training data, you don't know the CO2 footprint, you know nothing. It's just a service. And this is, of course, not really good enough for us. So this is a bit of a challenge for us, or was a challenge for us, and we thought about it really, really hard. And several months ago, we, because of that, started an initiative that I want to announce to you today. So we are in the process of building the Nextcloud Assistant. Nextcloud Assistant is based on the large language model. It will can do all these features that ChatGPT can do. It will be 100% open source. It, the model will be completely freely available. The training data will be completely transparent. And we are working on that at the moment. We do tests internally already. And this will be released later this year in one of the next releases. Uh, to everybody, and I think, again, then we have a very nice ethical system that runs completely on your server and is completely secure. So this rounds up our ethical AI initiative. To summarize it, we want to embrace all these cool new features, but we want to do this in a good way, in an open source way, in a private respecting way, in a non-discriminating way, in a CO2 footprint, footprint minimizing way, and this is our commitment and our goal, and we're working hard on that, and we make, make really, really, really good progress. So a lot more about it will come in the next few months. So this rounds up this release. So Nextcloud Hub 5 is really the biggest release we had so far. I'm really blown away. It's just a few weeks since the last release, but we already did so much more cool things, and I'm really impressed by, the, yeah, by the, all the ideas and the productivity and the creativity of the Nextcloud community. So we have a lot of features here. Let me summarize this a little bit that we introduced in this Nextcloud 
release. It starts with the workspace concept, so as I sh uh, showed in the very beginning, and then Jos showed it in the files part, and the other colleagues showed it in the other parts. So this is a concept that binds everything together, makes a very, very nice and powerful collaboration suite. Then the end-to-end -end encryption improvement, that's very, very big. I believe we have the most advanced encryption system here in the market in this case. The SMIME support, additionally to GPG in mail, is very huge. Then we have the shared mailboxes, which are really, really game-changer and very important for a lot of companies who use with this kind of shared mailboxes with the Exchange or Outlook setup. Then we have the Exchange and Teams connector, and it's, of course, there's other connectors to the Microsoft world, so we can really connect with them and play together and yeah, have an integrated solution. Then we have in Talk, of course, the call recordings, very cool feature, and the super innovative transcribing feature completely on, the, on your device. The Talk desktop client is coming. That's very nice, very, I think it's the number one feature request we get in Talk, and we are very happy that we deliver that now. Next Cloud Notes for notes taking. Next Cloud Tables for structured data, very, very important if you want to move away from SharePoint or other proprietary services, and you want to introduce some kind of workflows or other processes in your organization, a very, very powerful tool. The open collaboration services are strategically very important for us because an open API to other applications, to our app and developers and to other software vendors and is very important. So really doubling down on that and having a great API with great documentation and great example code and great SDKs to make like super crazy easy to somehow connect with Nextcloud. Then, the, of course, last but not least, the whole ethical AI initiative. This is something which I believe is very important that we enable our users to be super productive and good, but still in a responsible way. So great release. Now I want to take a step back a little bit and just reflect a little bit about where we are coming from and what we are doing here. Because when I started together with the rest of the community many, many years ago to build Nextcloud, the main motivation was, and of course still is, that we want to avoid the dystopia. The dystopia that five big companies control all data and all communication on the planet. And because this is like the, the direction where everything is going. And Nextcloud has the, has the goal and something we want to achieve to build an alternative, a decentralized open source alternative to these big tech companies. And this is why, this is why I get up every morning. <laughs> this is like the main motivation um, behind Nextcloud. What I find very interesting is that this danger that these five big companies control all the data is actually getting worse with AI. Because this organization, they use all the data to train their machine learning models that they then give to us for free to use. Very nice, thank you. Um, so that not only controlling the data, but also the whole decision making. Right? As I showed you, they're writing the contracts for us. They're writing our email messages for us. They're deciding what is shown, what is recommended to us. So the combination of this monopoly of these data, data silos together with the machine learning power is like crazy, crazy dangerous. So I can only say that I'm personally I'm more motivated than ever to really be an alternative to these punk, uh, companies. For me, this is really, really important. So I want to... Um, position us here a little bit on a, on a business one-on-one -on -one chart here where we have the powerful and intuitive axis on the X side and then the Y axis we have the privacy aware and ethical and open source um, uh, scale. And now I want to like show you where like different collaboration tools are. Obviously we all know that the big tech companies they have their solutions that are roughly in this area. They are quite powerful and they're very intuitive to use. A lot of people like to use them, of course. Unfortunately, they're not very high on the open source and ethical side. They're just not very privacy aware. And obviously, none of them are, is open source, which is a problem. The good thing is that there are some open source alternatives. Right? There are like some of them here, and they are definitely more ethical and open source and privacy aware and safer and so on. Unfortunately, lots of open source projects are not very good on the intuitive to use, powerful usability, nice design side of things. And this is a bit of the problem. What we are building as Nextcloud is this. This is where we will be as Nextcloud. We 
will be more powerful and intuitive to use as the big tech companies, and at the same time being more ethical and open source and privacy aware as some open source alternative. You might think that this is quite ambitious, right? I mean, really trying to be better than big tech. How is this possible? Well, it is possible because we use our superpower. And our superpower we have is our community. Because we are not doing this alone. The open source community is so great with working together, with collaborating, with sharing code, with sharing ideas. And this is like really an unstoppable force. So this is really, really good. So Nextcloud, the Nextcloud company is small, but we have thousands. I mean, over 2,000 volunteers who just contribute to Nextcloud core alone. And additionally, that we have the translators and the app developers and all the other people. So it's a really big community and it's growing every day. And with the help of that, with the help of that superpower, we believe we can be the alternative to these big tech companies. So Nextcloud is a great tool for home users, for the education sector, for government use, for a service provider, and it's also for companies and organizations. I really think that Nextcloud is the solution here, and that's what we're building. And Nextcloud Hub 5 is the next big step in this direction. Thanks a lot. <laughs>